Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And just so you know, I, I was about to start doing a whole big explanation and getting into the technical details of why you need to gap spark plugs, how to choose different heat range and whatnot based on your build. But I said, you know what, I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm just gonna show you guys how I gap my spark plugs. Um, if you guys would like for me to go, get into a technical discussion as to how to pick your, the spark plug you should be running, uh, how to gap it appropriately, et cetera, and why, then just let me know in the comments. If I see that there's enough interest in it, I'll, I'll gladly do it. But for now, let me just go ahead and show you how I gap my spark plugs. Hey guys, and I just want to say that I make a big effort at keeping my videos positive, you know, but this is a, one of the few times you're going to see me go on a rant. But if you have one of those coin-based spark plug gappers, I need you to do me one, do one favor for me. Take that out of your keyring and throw it in the garbage. You, that thing does not belong in anybody's hands. They are just a money grab for people. They're inconsistent in, in, uh, in production and there is so much room for error with them. It's not something that you should be using at all. And especially on, the, on this type of spark plug that has such a fine tip, all you're gonna do is damage the, the electrode. So you don't want to use that stuff. I'm going to show you guys the right equipment to do it correctly. All right, this is what I use to do the spark plugs. Number one, feeler gauges. You can get a set. I mean, I, I got this one at Advanced Auto Parts. God, maybe 15 years ago. I don't know. They're cheap. But you see here how each of these have the measurement on them. And what you do is that you stack them in a way to get to the gap that you want. In my case, per my tuner, David Shop. He wants me to put these spark plugs at, at 0 0.028. So I'm gonna grab the 0 0.02, which is further down here. 0 0.24, there you go. All right, so we got a 0 0.024, and I'm gonna grab a 0 0.004, here we go. And together, see? Together, they're gonna make a 0 0.028. And so, stack them like this. That's the gap that I would need to put these spark plugs at. The next thing you need is a gapper tool. This you can get online anywhere. I got it on Amazon. I uh, don't remember how much it was, maybe $15. It was cheap, um, but it's just an anodized aluminum thing. All it is, is just a, uh, a place to put the spark plug in and you have a, this adjustable thing and you see how it brings in a screw. That screw then pushes down on the electrode of the spark plug to close in the gap. Now, obviously, because of the way that this works, this only works for closing gap, not for spreading. They have a different tool that you can use for that. I just didn't bother buying it because I don't need it. My spark plugs that I use, I always have to gap them down, not up. So this is all I need for it. Okay, so you don't have to use a table vise. I'm only using it so that you guys can more clearly see what's going on. So we set that there. We're gonna go ahead and drop the spark plug in. Okay, there we go. So I just have it down into it. Okay, so now that we have it all the way down, we're gonna go ahead and take our feeler gauges, which of course we already measured out to be at the gap that we want. Put these together, right? And the goal here is so that there's drag when I squeeze them in between here. Right now they're pretty open. They just, it just goes in, no problem. Let's see if I can get a better angle for you guys. Yeah, you see? So it's very close, it's not all that bad, but we do want to close that up. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and pull this out and we are going to start squeezing this a little bit. There you go, too much right there. And just go little by little until you have a, until it barely goes in. That's it. You see, it didn't take all that much, but you see now it like it actually grabs it. So that's what we want to get to. So that's it, this spark plug is done and we can move on to the next one.
go. That's the gap we want right there. Perfect. All right, so I hope that video helped you guys. I mean, that's how I ensure that all my spark plugs have the same identical gap from one cylinder to another. Uh, in the future, if I have any misfire issues, I know that it's not because I have one spark plug set at this gap and then the other spark plug is at a different gap. Uh, so it makes diagging a lot easier. Um, with that said, guys, if you, if you learned something here or if my information helped you in any way, please give me a like, consider subscribing, and I got more projects coming for both the BMW and the Volkswagen. Thank you so much.